在刚刚的一个单一个段落里面，净空法师以及刘牧师都给我们提到，就是说这个快乐的一个很重要的来源，就是说要怎么样去以爱传播这个爱，寻找到这个真正的爱。那刘刘牧师举了一个很有意思的例子，就是这个 love 呢，就是要以上沟通，以呃与、呃、兄弟们之间有一个很好的交通，能够传播出这个爱。那金空法师也提到，就是其实我们很多时候是沟通管道不畅通了，所以造成人内部的人与人之间的冲突、紧张跟不和谐。那我我也想我在讲想到这个时候，我我想到好像是不是就像。不同的族群生活在一起，其实对于呃，好像就是我们人体不同的器官一样，有的时候是我们的眼睛跟耳朵、手跟脚。那我们怎么样可以有个比较好的和谐，一起来让我们自己能够做我们更呃简单、更协调来做我们想要做的动作？那我想这个动作就是心灵的平。平安跟喜乐以及宁静。那我想，首先请满神父跟我们讲一下，以你的观点，我们可以怎么样来做？那不同的族群、不同的宗教团体之间，可以让怎么样来促进这种和谐的发展？我想，第一，如同刚才我们说的，就是那个 love 啊，或者就是要从。上就是下来的，我们也需要就是这个 love， 所以我们比方说在场的每一个团体或者每一个宗教，这个我们也可以多多就是祈求就是这个 love 下来，这个是我们需要的。可是如同你说的，就是也有就是那个彼此之间的，我想今天这样的一个座谈会是很好的一个例子。宋朝的时候是不可能的，不是因为那个时候没有佛教。也不是那个时候没有基督教，而是因为那个时候交通没有现在的那么的方便，对不对？所以我们这个时代的人还是有一个找教，就是真正的把这个天下一家化，对不对？所以这个我们也务必，好像就是如同今天那样子，就是在就是面对这样整个世界的，也可以合作。所以这样子，一方面我们也可以祈求有就是更大的这个爱心，就是真正的要就是普照。可是同时，我们也应该就是多多的，就是先用现在的方法，就是来互相彼此认识，互相帮助，就是来解决，就是来帮助。就是是，好像就是我们世界上所有的兄弟姐妹也能够得到，就是这样的一个就是幸幸福。OK， 所以我自己觉得说，我们现在最近也有很多的例子，最近在在台湾嘛，就是地震的时候，你就看到就是，部分是的基督教、天主教、佛教什么的，就是那个时候还有很多在社会里面。很多人都是这样的一个合作来，就是互相帮助解决这个问题。呃，我们就是面对世界和平，我们也面对就是那个，比方说那个太空，比如说那个生态学，对不对？比方说那个空气污染，或者是很多的那些，已经很许许多多的地方，就是有过这样的合作。呃，我知道法法师就是曾经在台湾，我们天主教的神学院就是教过书。哎，这个已经就是这样的宗教跟宗教之间的对谈，这样的宗教跟宗教一起的合作，这个我们不是今天才开始，可是我觉得说就是这个。这个新的那个就是前几年，就是二十世纪的时候有一个开始，可是我们还是要做的更多，对，做的更多，因为要不然就是我们就好像在这个太空船上嘛，如果就是那个太太空船员就是彼此吵架的话，那么这个整个的那个 mission 都有一个危险嘛，对不对？所以我们人类在这个地球上，除非我们真的就是能够。就是彼此相爱和睦，对不对？然后就是一起，就是互相勉励，就是来，就是继续不断的在历历史的前进的，就帮助大家解决问题
。是，这个有从也可以这样子。对，所以我们听起来就是我们生活在这个地球上。也就是我们其实是是一个生命的共同体。那怎么样？您提到就说这是一个开端。接下来我想请这个呃院长跟我们解讲解一下，怎么样来促进彼此之间的了解跟认识呢？因为我们彼此在做不同的努力，是不是在？刚刚满神父讲，应该要增加彼此的了解跟认识，在这样子的前提之下，是不是我们彼此的努力能够更好的做一个整合？那请啊、呃、院长跟我们讲解一下。Well, Father Man has given the answer when he said we have to know each other.、Mm -hmm. I can give you an interesting experience.、Uh, some of our brothers were in San Diego.、Mm -hmm. And whenever we go to San Diego, we visit the very small Kuan Yin Temple there to burn incense. Just a few doors down from that temple, there is an establishment of a religious group that is bitterly opposed to everyone but themselves. So when they see us wearing the cross, going in to bow to Kuan Yin, they're a little bit confused and disturbed. And just a few weeks ago, they challenged some of the brothers and said, "You are Christians. Why are you going into that temple? And why are you offering this incense?" And he explained, "But if there is only one, then all temples are our temples. All churches are our churches. All prayers are our prayers." And this one young man of this group was. So inspired, and he said, "You mean you can pray anywhere you want to in your religion?" <laughs> he said, "Yes." He said, "I wish our religion was like that," which shows it is natural, spontaneous for us as human beings to really love one another, to respect one another. So one thing I think we should learn to do is to learn to pray together, to worship together. To learn to value and love one another's forms of worship. See, worship comes out of the heart. Theology comes out of the head, and the head is often much too tangled. Just as you can go into a friend's house when you see him love and reverence his father and mother, you will also naturally feel reverence and liking for them because you will think. They must be good parents.、Mm -hmm. My friend is showing this love and respect.、Mm -hmm. So when we turn our minds to a higher thing, to a transcendental reality, then the way we do that is very, not instinctual, lower, but intuitive, higher.、Mm -hmm. And then we can really understand how we feel about this. You see,、mm -hmm. it's wonderful to hear a Christian hymn saying, "How much、uh, I love you, Jesus." Your wonderful love, your greatness. How also wonderful it is to, in a temple, hear the、uh, hymn of meditation on Amida Buddha.、Mm -hmm. To hear thrilling、uh, words about the Pure Land, for example.、Mm -hmm. And just as we would say, I I trust in I trust in Jesus, or. I trust in the revelation of Muhammad, or I trust in the revelation given to Moses. To hear the words, "Let us take refuge with the Buddhas and Bodhisattvas assembled at the lotus pond,"、mm -hmm. thrills me.、Mm -hmm. And we can do it together. This is the wonderful thing. Thank you. So what you're saying is to do it, to carry it out. Yes. yes. And you believe it, that love comes from human nature. The, the good nature, the virtue. So what you're saying is, we need to act upon our virtue, our from our human human nature. Um, 精通法师。那么您说的呢，就是说用教育的方式。呃，刚才方丈是说我们自己要身体力行去做这个实践这个爱。那您说这个用教育的方式，我相信呃，教会是其实是社会教育的一个。呃，社会教育的机构，在某一个某一个层面来看，所以可以可以请请您再在这方面再多做阐释。院长刚才说，我们完全不知道。我在新加坡，印度教讲的
细颗角的角，我进去，我也会在下面买。他们的信徒看到非常的，所以有些我们佛教人问你为什么？我看到他，他们的神就是祝福，决定不分开。我进祝福多少，他们所共同的神是平等的礼拜。赞叹的供养，越定不会有一丝毫的分别。这是一个啊，九个宗教的成员能组团结在一起，啊，戒心突破。教育要落实，就是要做到，不是口说。口说的这个教育呢，不能解决问题。所以佛常常教我们，为人演说，演是表演，做出来给人看。啊，你才能叫人哦，是这样的啊，做出来人家有疑问提出来，我们给他解释说明，那叫说。啊，所以不是单单在课堂里面讲讲经说法，那没有用的。啊，如何把经典里面所说的道理、方法、境界落实到我们的生活，落实在我们的工作，落实在我们处事待人际，我们心量要拓开。我们今天。至少一个观念，要爱整个地球。爱整个地球能不能解决问题？不能解决问题。你不爱别的星球啊，还有星际战争，你还是麻烦。所以佛的爱的时候，是尽虚空变化界啊，你的问题才能解决。啊，你单单我这个区域那个区域不爱，问题就会产生。啊，我爱我的佛教，不爱其他宗教，宗教有冲突。宗教有战争，我爱我的族群，不爱其他族群，族群里面发生发生动乱，啊，所以这个爱是平等，啊，是广播的，绝对没有界限。这个爱是神的爱，这个爱是佛的慈悲。神是谁呢？神就是我们每个人自己。佛菩萨是谁呢？佛菩萨也是每一个人自己。啊，你觉悟了，佛家讲觉悟了，众生就成佛。迷惑了，佛就变成真实了。所以佛家讲完全的平等，这个才能真正的解决问题。今天我们这个演讲啊，这个 spiritual world 面，我想我们要产生的不是。两分钟身体健康法，<笑>三三项幸福的家庭的秘诀，或是五项什么？我想大概不是这样。我在想说，这只是一个 d i a l o g 现在要紧的，对我的信仰来讲，啊，刚才讲说神的问题，这问题，我在想还是回到说 repent 悔改。假如我们不愿意悔改，只是表面的说我们的爱，当然，我想九二一的大地震就是很好。每一个每一个宗教都发现，我们应当爱我们骨肉之亲。我想刚才已经讲了，不只是土耳其各地方这个人类的爱，可是问题就是刚才我讲的，我就是没有办法爱。我知道要爱就是爱不下去。那些离那些离婚的人，不是原来要结婚的时候，不是说。你看，有一有一个人电影明星，他结婚七次八次，他每一次说 “I give you my eternal love”， <笑>两年半。他有一次，我这次给你的爱好像这个羽毛在那个薄油上面，就是拔不开，三年照拔。所以这个爱还是根本就是说，假如没有上帝的给我的爱，不是自我。耶稣基督来到世界上，他说：“我知道，他用他的神的儿子耶稣流血。”舍命，这样才真正说，主我这个爱，假如没有这个伟大的爱，我的爱到底是有限。所以我刚才那个例子，那我们每天在吃维他命，维他命 C， 维他命什么东西，可是我们就忘记了吃维他命 L。可是 L 产品哪里来？不是自己制造的，自己制造的 L 还是有人的成分。怎么那个 pure love？ 所以耶稣在十字架上说：“父啊，赦免他们。”因为他们所做的，他们不知道，所以我想在爱里面要饶恕，我们族群当中要饶恕、接纳，饶恕是最难的，饶恕是最难的。可是，假如我们不饶恕，我们每个人都挂钩。啊，圣经在约翰福音十四章三十节这样说：“这世界的王将道
可是这世界王在我里面毫无损害，就是耶稣说，在我身上找不到可以挂钩。今天你我每个人都挂钩，所以我们要爱，爱不出去。所以怎么样？这个挂钩要拿掉，那这要饶恕，怨恨吗？要饶恕。他说，不是说不能生气，说生气不能到日落，就是说你生气要个结束，可不能犯罪。我们生气的时候，我们怨恨的时候，就是常常抓住。所以在讲到我们外面的时候。我还是想到最后还是里面，这里面，我想圣经里面一个撒该的故事，撒该一个财主，可是他有一次耶稣过去说爬到树上要看耶稣，耶稣说撒该快快下来，我今天要到你家里，啊，人家说怎么耶稣到一个罪人的家里，可是因为耶稣去的缘故，这个撒该说，主啊，你到我家里，我要把我一半的财富。给穷人，若是我恶诈的水，一倍赔四倍，我就发现沙该在接待耶稣的时候，他的生命找到了他真正神创造，他知道怎么处理财物，帮助穷人，他知道怎么样和人的关系，我恶诈的水赔四倍，他和自己和谐的关系，和神和谐的关系，和人和谐的关系，我想这是我们追求的。那目前我们能做的就是说，好，那些好的，每一个宗教都是许多好的，那我们去做。可是那根本最重要的爱，不是出于我。感谢主，刚才马上提到，我们还有圣神帮助。神就是知道我们不行，所以才有差遣他的圣子耶稣说，他离开的时候说，我要求神，父神就赐给你一个宝贵，是他永远与我们同在，那个才是要真正帮助我。我不行的算。啊，主啊，帮助我，主啊，帮助我，我一点点，主渐渐改变我。可是方向先对，才有改变。假如方向不对，在那边人的作为的改变，最后还是说 well being。可是 well being 最后不是自我。刚才讲的，我们有讲到更深的是，我怎么样来看神在我身形神像，神要我们管理这宇宙，我们怎么样生态方面各方面，还有对人的关系，用神的眼光来看你，来看你，来看你。不是用我的眼光，用我的眼光，我不喜欢，我不怎么样。可是我看神的眼光，每一个都是神所创造的，都是那么美。希望都恢复到神创造我们的形象。那这是我心中的负担，也是原来我是也是我是学工程的。那可是神呼召我，就说在心灵的世界怎么样帮助人。然后这个人汉主连上了以后，主的心里要他怎么做，和痛苦的同胞一起痛苦。爱那些不可爱的，所以整个圣经里面，他说整个律法两两件，爱神爱人就是这样。那么领受神的爱，去爱人，那这是我深深的负担。谢谢。我想我们今天早上听了四位宗教领袖跟我们讲解这个现代人遭遇到的苦闷。呃，怎么样来解决，让我们有很大的启发。我想很多很多的共通点，最基本的就是为什么我们会苦闷呢？就是因为迷失了自己，迷失了自信，迷失自己所来的来所来的来处啊、呃，从哪里来的？那怎么样来去寻找这些快乐呢？一个很重要的方法就是寻。经由教育的方法，不管是遵循上帝的呃教教育啊、呃，重化上帝的画像，或者是说佛陀的教育，寻求内心的平等，呃，宁静，不要为外界所呃干扰、所引诱，这些等等呢，那我们。跟依着不同教派的一种教育呢，慢慢来修正自己的行为，让自己呢能够。离开这种迷失的状态，去寻求比较一个永恒的爱，这是一个很有意思的。那接下来，呃，四位也都提到，就是说，那我们之间不同宗教这种不同教派之间要怎么样，可以怎么样来做呢？一个很重要就是要有一个对彼此之间有基本的了解跟认识。那除了就是说在知性上的了解跟认识之外呢，一个很重要，我似乎听到的就是。一个共同点就是我们要实际去做，要身体力行的来做。我们怎么样去了解爱我们自己的弟兄，也去爱其他的弟兄？那我想这是很重要的。如果说大家都能够把这个上帝的爱、佛陀的爱、菩萨的爱、天呃玛利亚的呃圣母玛利亚的爱都能够传都领受下来，然后传播给大家，我想。
呃，四位领袖跟我们开示的很重要一点，就是我们其实，在很多地方就像手跟足、眼睛跟鼻子，不见得是说要争。哪一个好，哪一个不好，而是我们怎么样在这个地球上能够和谐共同的相处，这是一种包容性的，而不是一种排他性的。我想非常感谢四位领袖给我们一个这么这么好的一个啊、呃、解释跟了解，让我们知道就是说我们跟你们。我跟他，我甚至我跟草木，我跟大自然这个环境再扩展，我跟这个宇宙，或者是我跟过去，我跟未来呢，都是紧密不可分离的。当我们有一个对自己一个很很拘束的一个定义，就是我就是我，你就是你，我是中国人，你是美国人，之间有这么多的不同，而不去看我们之间根本的共通性，我们之间共。根本的这种连贯性的时候，我们就会痛苦了。我们就当我们分离的时候，我们就痛苦了。那我非常感谢呃四位领袖给我们的做这么好的呃,呃讲解跟我们指导。我不晓得满瑞阳要不要最后再讲。是我希望我相信这是一个很好的启蒙<咳>。呃，满师傅刚才也讲了说，如何的增进沟通呢？这一个这一个座谈会就是最好的例子。我希望这样子的，我们在二十一世纪的开端，回看我们二十世纪人类走过来的路，我们发现人类的，呃，文明越进步，结果我们的身心灵越空虚；科学越发达，我们道德越衰败。呃呃，物质生活的条件越好，人类的美德反而越来越逐渐的消失。那么，由各位宗教的领袖呢？帮助我们发掘我们自己人性的美德、人性本善的地方，然后让我们去做，就是说，呃，实践我们人性的呃美德，呃，这是一个很好的开始。这样子呢，才能够真正的做到心灵的改革。是，那我们也希望说，借借由这个开端，我们让这个地球、让这个世纪能够更美好、更和谐。今天非常感谢各位领袖来跟我们这边做指导，开始，谢谢,谢大家，谢谢。谢谢我们还有大概五分钟的时间，短短的五分钟，我想请各位大师呢，呃，为我们做一个简单一简单一分钟的结论。我想我的我的结论就是要呃，就是就耶稣教我们的那个祈祷，那个天主经，就是来做我自己的一个结论。我觉得跟我们今天所讲的很有密切的关系。我们的天父，愿你的名。受宣扬，愿你被承认为天主，愿你的国来临，愿你的旨意奉行在人间，如同在天上。求你今天赏给我们日用的食粮，求你宽恕我们的罪过，如同我们宽恕别人一样。不要让我们陷于诱惑。但救我们免于凶恶。阿门。I think I'll try to put two points in one minute. One, when we love someone, feel friendliness towards someone, we want to share with them that which we value and that which we love, and therefore we need to learn to share with one another our own spiritual life. Perhaps reveal our spiritual life to one another. And again, our ways of worshiping, our ways of reaching out, not just dogmatizing. The second point being, all life begins inside and moves outside. Therefore, two points: one, to stay alive, we need to keep moving outside. That is, we need to reach out toward one another, but also to get back in touch with where that life is. We have to learn an interior life. We have to develop. The interior life of silence and stillness, and then when we move out, we can have from silence we can have something worthwhile saying. Thank you. Thank you. For the word, it is the word of love. The word of love is the word of love. 人有自私自利，如果能够放下自私自利，慈悲
，神圣之爱就不难落实。放下自私自利，放下名门利养，放下一切的权势，为一切众生做义务的服务，这是人生真正的价值意义。至高无上的快乐就在其中。好，在这个一分钟的结论，我就想到耶稣所说的话：面对这个许多的痛苦、许多的这样的难处的时候，耶稣这样宣告说：“凡劳苦担重担的，到我这里来，我就使你们得安息。”那么在这样的里面，我就想到说：“让我们到主的里面接受安息。”然后在里面也是接受他的生命，接受他的爱，然后靠着圣灵，我们才能去回去爱神爱人。可是爱神呢，神看不到，所以人是神让你有机会去表达爱神的一个机会。所以爱神、爱人，可是实际的爱人，表示我们真正爱神。所以愿神的爱充满我们每一个人。可是能施行出去的。一定要刚才说抓住他，领受生命，抓住这个爱，这个一放，下面的很快就会来到。所以 ，love， love 就是 vit vitamin love， 我们一定每天要吃，每天要养胃。谢谢，谢谢大家。I'm Bob Suzuki.、Uh, as、uh, Rocco said, I'm the president of Cal Poly Pomona. I've been there for eight and a half years now. I was born and raised and educated in the United States,、uh, and did my、uh, college education at the University of California at Berkeley and my PhD at uh, Caltech uh, nearby. Thank you, Mr. Garcetti. I'm Gil Garcetti. I'm the Los Angeles County District Attorney. I was born and raised in Los Angeles. I am the son of an immigrant、uh, family. My father born in Mexico, and he was a man who, frankly,、uh, without going too much into this, was a man who was never graduated from from any school and was always in trouble with the police. But I am, by law, the chief law enforcement officer of the county of Los Angeles. We have about 1,100 prosecutors. We handle about 65. I'm sorry, more like 80 to 80, 90,000 felony、uh, crimes every year, and 250, 260,000 misdemeanors every year. But I view my job as not just prosecuting, but preventing crime. Thank you. And then、um, our next guest is、uh, Venerable Master Jin Kong. He is the founder and spiritual leader of Hamida Society around the world. He has been a monk for the past 40 years.、Uh, he has founded and established more than 50 Hamida Society around the world. In the past 10 years, he has been promoting a multicultural education,、uh, promoting the understanding between different cultures and different religions. In the past, for the past 10 years, we are very glad to have him here. Uh, Councilman,、uh, thank you for inviting me. I am Paul Z.、Uh, my Chinese name is Xu Huichen.、Uh, I have two jobs. 
Uh, my full-time job is serving on the City Council of South Pasadena, twice as mayor. Uh, this is a full-time job. Unfortunately, it doesn't pay me. Uh, <laughs> therefore, I have another job, which I only put in like two, three hours a day, and I'm able to raise the money to, ra uh, to uh, raise my family and feed my kids. And I'm a businessman. I own a small business which distributes uh, industrial safety equipment uh, to the major industries here, which is located in El Monte. Uh, I am a first generation immigrant. Uh, I was born in China. Uh, I grew up in Hong Kong. And I came over here 20 some years ago. So I do understand the needs and the concerns uh, of the immigrants. And I also understand uh, perhaps the cultural differences between the first generation as well as so called the mainstream. Uh, Americans and later on, you know, I'd be happy to uh, share my views with you. Thank you, thank you, everyone. Uh, before we start, I would like to go over some uh, objectives, and then also introduce our uh, translator today, uh, Mr. Jay Gao. Uh, Mr. Gao is a graduate student from UCLA, and he will be helping us provide translation to um, Variable Master, uh, Variable Master Dean Kong. Thank you, Jay. Oh, with today's discussion, we're hoping to achieve three different objectives. The first one, to at least, uh, the first one is to have some dialogue between leaders of different domains in the society regarding the multicultural harmony in this issue, to hear and to learn from your experience and your wisdom. That's our first objective. The second one is to find ways to resolve conflict between different social groups. Could be different ethnic groups, could be people from different social backgrounds, social status. That would be our second objective. The third one it would be to uh, try to find and explore some ways to collaborate from different uh, groups and so we could work together to achieve multicultural harmony. That would be the three objectives we're hoping to achieve throughout this panel discussion. Then I would have leaders to go over some uh, uh, ground rule for us to this afternoon. Sure, as, as we may see here, this is a multicultural group per se already. And I'd just like to uh, mention a couple of guidelines for today's discussion. First, uh, I would like to encourage the mutual respect for different voices and opinions here. And we try not to have cross-talking. We will ask a specific question to each of you, and you can voice your opinion for about three, four minutes. Then we like to leave about 15 minutes for interaction and uh, discussion. So Rocco and I will moderate uh, the process. That will be three sections for today's discussion. Sure. Thank, you. Thank you. I would like to especially uh, express my grat uh, gratitude to the panelists and also to the sponsor for the, today's event, that's the Amida Society in Los Angeles. They are a nonprofit uh, religious organization promoting the uh, certain practice in Buddhism. And in the recent years, because of the teaching from Master Jin Kong, they're also trying very hard to achieve a multicultural understanding and multicultural harmony, and also uh, interreligious uh, interreligious group understanding. I really appreciate their effort in making this uh, panel discussion possible. And I think this is a very time, uh, very good timing for us to get together here today to discuss this issue because this is the new millennium and people are having a lot of new hopes. And not to, uh, as in New Immigrant, we come to this uh, country, we, we have a lot of new hopes. And this is the beginning of a new era. We're hoping that we could talk about this issue and helping the different groups in the society achieving this un understanding. Also, um, this week uh, we are just celebrating Martin Luther King Jr.'s birthday, mm -hmm. and I think that he represents a spirit uh, to promote mutual understanding and live in peace and harmony. Therefore, I feel like it's very timely that we have a discussion here today. Um, let me start by addressing the question to Councilman uh, Mozi that uh, in the society like um, America, especially in Los Angeles, people come from various uh, backgrounds, cultural background, ethnic background, and social background. And take uh, South Pasadena, for example, where you are the councilman. People, uh, the demographic has been changing rapidly in the past few years. And we know that in, when a society, when a small group, there's a lot of change, rapid change in the composition of their members, usually they could 
have um, some uh, misunderstanding and sometimes even conflict. And I'm wondering if you could share with us uh, what have you seen of some of the common misunderstandings and conflict in your com local community due to the rapid change in the demogra demographics? Well, allow me to make a joke. Uh, I was told that as a human being, the only change that we do not resist to, actually we look forward to, is when we were baby and when the parents were changing our diapers. <laughs> uh, other than that, as a human being, we dislike changes and we resist to changes. So naturally, when you are in a society that when you see uh, demographic changes, uh, there will be some people call this discrimination. I don't. I call this resistance. And basically, when people don't understand you, uh, and then they will be uh, using their own thoughts and guessing, and they will try to figure out what is your background, what is your philosophy, and therefore there will be a lot of resistance. Now, a small city like South Pasadena, oftentimes we receive the compliment saying that, you know, we truly is a model city. Uh, different ethnic groups work together, live in the same community. How do we do that? My magic word is participation, or perhaps another way to look at it is to get involved. Only by getting involved, you can get to know each other better, and you can understand what is the thought and the beliefs of the other side. And after you truly work together as one group, this kind of resistance will gradually go away. Eventually, you will gain the mutual trust and you will be working truly as one community. Thank you. I think, uh, Mr. Councilman, you just mentioned about uh, the fear of unfamiliarity and also the resistance of, you know, for change. I think this may lead to the next question I'd like to ask uh, Mr. Gassetti about uh, what in your professional capacity, capacity that, uh, can you give us some example of the common cases of hate crime? Uh, certainly. Hate crimes occur at various levels, but most hate crimes, first of all, are committed by young people, by juveniles. A hate crime is if I say something very ugly about your ethnicity, or the color of your skin, or the shape of your eyes, that's not a hate crime. That may be hateful for you to hear that, but in our country, that's protected under the United States Constitution, freedom of speech. On the other hand, if we have a young student who comes up and starts calling you names, ethnic slurs, and then punches you, now we have a hate crime. Because the only reason that he punched you or hit you was because he didn't like the shape of your eyes or the color of your skin or your religion, whatever it might be. And so that's when my office begins to participate. We are the chief prosecutorial agency for the county of Los Angeles and usually where people see us is after the fact after a crime has been committed is there enough evidence to establish that a certain person committed the crime and if so you prosecute it and then we seek justice there doesn't mean the maximum sentence or the maximum charge you seek justice and that could be if it's a young man, for example, who hits you one time, let's say he has no record whatsoever. We will start working with that young man within the judicial framework, within the criminal justice system, to see what is the appropriate punishment. Now, it used to stop right there with the punishment. But I've said, no, that's not good enough. Because if all you do is punish this young man, he hasn't learned anything. If you just send him to jail, when he comes out, he will still be hating. So what can we do to change his attitudes about ethnic minorities or religions, whatever his problem might be? We've started a program working with the federal government. They gave us money. That's a, we started a program in the Antelope Valley portion of Los Angeles called JOLT, Juvenile Offenders Learning Tolerance. And our goal here is to teach tolerance to young people who've exhibited 
racial or ethnic or religious biases or hatred or who have been involved in hate crimes. Rather let them develop and go step by step and become worse and worse, become a skinhead. And no reflection on the venerable master here. I'm skinhead. <laughs> <laughs> but it is, I think, very important that we work with them and their parents to try and teach tolerance. That's the richness of our country, is the multicultural, multi-ethnic, multi multi-religious aspect of our society. And they should glory in what we have, not be afraid or not be threatened by someone because the color of his or her skin is different or it's a different religion that's being practiced. Seem like this really tied to just what Councilman talked about. You know, when people, due to the color differences or the culture or ethnicity, that sometimes cause some senseless cry. And your yes. focus is more give the benefit of the doubt. You still want to educate and look from the broader perspective to help those people. Yes, understanding that if someone gets involved and truly violent, let's say that this person who doesn't like the color of your skin or your ethnicity instead of just hitting you one time, now knocks you down and starts kicking you, breaks your nose, knocks out an eye, does something horrible. He's not going to get involved in this program I'm talking about. There, I'm going to punish him, and we're going to put him in jail for a long time. And hopefully there will be some programs there that will help him. But my goal now is, once he's been involved in that level of crime, I have to protect you, and the best way to protect you is take this person off the street. Thank you. We will come back to talk about the Thank conflict you. resolution later. Good. Thank you. Um. Well, um, like that, in the society, if it's due to misunderstanding, well, there be a, could be potentially some uh, conflict. And uh, I would like to ask, uh, Venerable Master, from a religious perspective, what do you consider as the source of conflict? In <coughs> 你的大麦都能产生所有一切的社会的弊病都是人与人之间的少接触这个问题解决还是教育the master said that just like in Buddhism and also in um, its education, what we stress is that the source of all conflict, like our physical body, is due to a, a, a certain uh, stoppage in, in its circulation. If we have bad blood circulation, our body obviously gets sick. Using the same analogy, if we look at this whole society as an organism, and each, all beings, all human beings in this society as individual cells, then we can see that this blockage of circulation, it's almost like the inter, the human to human communication uh, for all members in this society has stopped or has suffered some kind of a, a barrier. 
So what we have to do focus on, really, to bring about this harmony, is to focus on the interperson communication. And just like the um, uh, district attorney just said, you know, it's it's more important really to have some kind of prevention program where you can teach people to appreciate the differences among different uh, cultural, different culture, and people from different religious background. So, by the same token, in, in, in Buddhism, we believe that this program is really in the same spirit to promote uh, he, uh, harmony and peace in this society, which, once we bring about an interperson harmony, it's like the, body, the cell of the body. Once the circulation gets going, then health returns. Thank you, Jane. In this session, the last question I'd like to ask uh, Dr. Suzuki is that I know Cal Poly is a very diverse uh, student population campus. And can you give us some examples about uh, some kind of the complex between the different uh, groups uh, on campus? Well, Cal Poly Pomona is indeed a very diverse campus. Um, about 70% of our students are students of color. Uh, and about 40% of that 70% are Asian Pacific uh, American students. Uh, we've been fortunate at Cal Poly Pomona because we haven't had any really serious incidences of racial or ethnic conflict. Uh, there have been minor incidents, but I know that other universities have experienced uh, violence and they have experienced far uh, greater conflicts than we have. Um, we like to think that it's partly due to the fact that we do have many programs in place to promote multicultural harmony, uh, to promote greater communication between the various student groups. I was really heartened uh, last year when we were celebrating uh, Martin Luther King's birthday and they had a um, parade on campus. Uh, and it wasn't just the African-American students who participated. Practically every uh, ethnic group uh, participated in that parade. And one of the things that we try to emphasize uh, at the university uh, is that while we respect diversity and we, we want to promote diversity, we also feel that it goes hand in hand with greater unity among the different groups. Um, you know, the uh, American creed is uh, e pluribus unum. Uh, unity through diversity. Now, <clears throat> that's a lot easier said than done. Uh, but I think we have to emphasize both when we promote multiculturalism. Uh, we have to respect the diversity. Uh, we have to uh, promote the multiculturalism, but not at the expense of losing the unity of society. And so that's something we emphasize a lot. And I think the leadership of any organization, if they're able to get this message across to everybody in the organization, it helps a lot. It also helps that Cal Poly Pomona is an educational institution, and so uh, we have many educational programs to promote greater harmony. So those are some of the th things that we have experienced. I think in this session especially that we address a couple of issues about the fear of um, familiarity, the fear of change, and some of what are the costs or the sources of the conflict in different uh, groups. Uh, uh, what are your thoughts about, uh, what is it about the, bi the bias or stereotypical feelings towards the different uh, groups and also the prejudice? You know, can you just voice that, uh, your comments about it? Uh, you know, where are this coming from and how come you are influenced by this? Oh, do you want? Doesn't matter. Well, yeah. If you want me to go first, I think there are uh, several fundamental uh, elements, if you will, that we will have to identify. Uh, number one, uh, we need to recognize that this great nation, this great country of the United States, is truly a nation of immigrants. Uh, regardless of whether you uh, you and your family just moved here 90 days ago or 90 years ago. Uh, you are from an immigrant family. And the true American, so to speak, is the American Indians. Uh, so that much, you know, we have to recognize. The second element is what is mainstream? Oftentimes people look at mainstream, this terminology, and they refer it to white. Now, I disagree. Or if you refer it to Hispanic Americans or Asian Americans, no. It's, I think the correct uh, identification is at any given time and place. For example, in Los Angeles today, if you add 
uh, perhaps like 40% of the milk, meaning white, and 40% uh, of the uh, honey, say, you know, representing the Hispanic Americans and the Asians, and perhaps a few percentage of the chocolate representing the African American, and you mix this together. Now, this particular drink, in my mind, it's called mainstream. So mainstream can vary uh, according to the place and the time. Once we recognize what kind of country is this, which is a nation of immigrants, what is mainstream at any given time and place, according to the ethnic makeup, the demographic makeup, this is called a mainstream. Now, by doing that, then all of a sudden you have the tone set and then you can say, we are really part of the mainstream. We are really part of this community. And naturally, this kind of resistance, or perhaps you want to call it differences, will go away easily. However, for many people, I would have to say that unfortunately, don't recognize this kind of fundamental elements. Oftentimes, we'll refer mainstream to as white, or, you know, hey, I am Americans, and you are a foreigner from a foreign country, which are totally incorrect. Uh, if I might add, if I understand your question, the problems that are inherent in any multicultural uh, society such as ours uh, really are based, in my mind, in one thing, ignorance. Ignorance of the other side, be it a religious uh, group, uh, be it a nationality, an ethnic group, whatever it might be. My son uh, was going to college back east and he started dating a Chinese-American woman. We got very close with the family, but she also made it very clear that she wanted her daughter to marry a Chinese-American. And, you know, there's some laughter in the audience there, especially from women, because, you know, I know what's happening here. We all know what's happening. You go into the Mar Armenian community, it's the same thing, fine. You can date people outside the Armenian community, but I want you to marry an Armenian. Why? Because you're a little fearful, and some of it is, I understand, we have traditions, we have cultures, we don't want to lose that. We have a rich heritage. What happens if you, do, you marry someone who is not from the same cultural background? Will you not, will you forget about this? Well, I would hope that they don't forget about that. Now, my son and his ex-girlfriend are still extremely close friends. They're not going to get married. Uh, but nevertheless, it would be a richness that we all see. I am, as I said, primarily of Mexican ethnicity. My mother is also Mexican. I'm an Italian, court, uh, I'm Italian by quarter blood. My wife happens to be Jewish. What are my children? My children are Los Angeles. That's what they are. They're this great cultural, I think, togetherness that we have. But each one of them have to do what many of us have done. If you don't know about a, a religion, if you don't know about a, a ethnic group, then learn about them. You'll find many marvelous things that you will want to copy yourself. Thank you. You are happy to answer our next section of the questions. Great suggestion there, how to resolve the conflict. Sure. I, we have about two minutes left for this section. I just wonder, any other comments you'd like to make? I would uh, agree with Mr. Garcetti that ignorance does play uh, an important role. I think there's another factor, however, and that's the competition for scarce resources among different groups. Uh, and historically, if you look at California, and you look at the conflicts between the different ethnic groups. It was over uh, scarce resources. And I think that uh, what the master said about uh, the body and the blockage that occurs in a body can lead to illness. Uh, I think in the same way, when we have groups in our society that do not have access to adequate resources, it's sort of like a blockage in the body. And we have to deal with uh, these huge differences uh, in the resources that different uh, groups may have. I'm really talking about uh, abject poverty. Uh, we have to work to uh, eliminate that in our society, to try to have greater equity in our society. So I think that's another factor that we have to consider.
Thank you very much. And I think we're going to move on to talk about, this. I can hear this enthusiasm about like, let's how to resolve this conflict and, and to do something about it. To, um, we really appreciate Mr. Gus and he can be here for us. I know that you have to leave a little bit earlier today. Um, so I think we are going to start to address the question to you for this next segment. Okay.